JP Morgan lost two billion dollars, and we found out about it at the end of last week. And uh, you know, people had different reactions to it. Even up till now, Mitt Romney saying, "I would not rush to pass new legislation or new regulations," saying, "Oh no, no, don't worry." The banks have this under control. I don't know why you guys would bother with regulating the banks. Don't be crazy. By the way, the top five contributors to Mitt Romney's campaign are all banks. Weird how that works. Now, on the other hand, I remember a gentleman who said on Monday's program that uh, this situation might be a little bit larger than people expected. Anybody know who that was? Well, let's check out the video and find out. This is not a casino. No, no, of course it's not, Jamie. Except we just found out that J.P. Morgan has lost at least two billion. Now Jamie Dimon is saying uh, closer to three billion, and some are speculating perhaps four billion dollars in credit derivatives losses. Yeah. Well, here's what Jamie Dimon said. He said, "Yeah, it's, it's two billion. It's two billion. Uh, but over the next couple of quarters, meaning six months, it might get to the point where it could be perhaps three billion, right?" Mm, now we find out. Trading losses suffered by J.P. Morgan Chase have surged in recent days, according to the New York Times, surpassing the bank's initial $2 billion estimate by at least $1 billion, greater than $3 billion. Now, I remember somebody else. Who was it? Was it the same guy? Same guy made another prediction. Huh? All right, let's watch. If this is only a $3 billion loss, J.P. Morgan should be ecstatic because once these things start to unravel, three billion dollars is the tip of the iceberg. Now, Jamie Dimon said that uh, it might, over the next six months, get to a point where they might lose another billion dollars. It took four days. Four days for them to lose another billion dollars. Now, here's the devastating part. Uh, that is going to give you a sense of why that prediction about how this might be the tip of the iceberg uh, has an excellent chance of being right. New York Times quote, he estimated that the initial loss of over just two billion dollars was caused by a move of a quarter percentage point or 25 basis points on a portfolio with a notional value of 150 billion to 200 billion dollars. Now 150 to 200 billion is not all the money that JP Morgan has at stake it's the value of the trade. JP Morgan theoretically has less than that at stake. Now, having said that, did you understand the relevant part of that? They lost two billion because it moved a quarter of one percent. Okay. You know what this is? It's called an elbow, and it's in the sky. And it's about to come down so hard on Jamie Dimon's head. What did I tell you? I told you on Monday. Do you think Jamie Dimon is going to panic over $2 billion? In the last quarter, in just the last three months, they made $4 billion. They'd still be profitable in the last quarter if it was just a $2 billion loss. He'd brush that off. He'd say, oh, it's no big deal. Stop whining about it, right? You praise me for what a great banker I am. No, 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 no. The loss is going to be a lot larger. Now, all, everybody's moving against them. Because you have to understand there's people on the other side of these bets. So the other banks or smelling blood in the water. And they know what his position is. And the, the position that they initially took, the guy who did it, Bruno Iskell, was called the London Whale because the position was so goddamn large. And he can't get out of it. It's not liquid. So he's having trouble selling the position. Well, he's fired already, so <laughs> he's no longer with them, I should say. Okay, So it's not him. He's like, well, me, me. He already took his money and went home. right? So J.P. Morgan can't get out of it. And they're punching them and punching them and chomping them away at them. In already four days, they already lost another billion. What do you think is going to happen in the next four days? Imagine if they lost 2%. Can you, all they got to do is, in their position, in their bet, they lose 2%. You know what, would, what that would mean? An $8 billion loss. And we're just getting warms up. Do you see why I kept stressing that they're taking too much risk with too much money, that there was no limits on leverage, and that there are no limits on these murky derivatives. So if, because if you take risk with that much money, even a quarter percent turn against you is devastating. Imagine if you lost a whole percentage point. Oh, no, no, they're in a world of trouble, world of trouble. And, but nonetheless, after all of this, the New York Times concludes, quote, 
No one has blamed Mr. Diamond for the trade, which was under the oversight of the head of the chief investment office, Ina Drew. <laughs> what? No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That is absolutely wrong. You know who's blamed Jamie Diamond for the trade? Me. Okay. I blame How could you not blame him? Do you know who Ina Drew reported to? The only person she reported to. Okay. Can you take a wild guess? Jamie Diamond. <laughs> they passed by the other risk formulas that the rest of the bank was using. They had a special risk formula in her division, which meant gamble all you like. The only person she had to report to and was responsible to was Jamie Dimon. He's the one that signed off on it. Why? Because they were all making crazy money when things were good, when they were winning the bets. Now that they're losing the bets, all of a sudden, well, I mean, no, but, but nobody would blame Jamie Dimon because in New York and in Washington, our job is to fluff Jamie Dimon. Are to, and to say, oh, what a great guy, oh, Jamie Dimon, Jamie Dimon is the best banker. President Obama's still talking about how he's such a brilliant banker. Well, like maybe none of you in New York and Washington criticize Jamie Dimon. But I've been criticizing Jamie Dimon not just for this, but all throughout as he made all those cocky statements about how it's just a few bad apples and you can't blame banking overall. And you certainly can't blame J.P. Morgan Chase and Jamie Dimon and how freaking brilliant they were. And I told you they weren't brilliant. I told you that they were taking the same kind of risks as everybody else and that it was going to blow up in their face. And you know what? Right again, Bob. <laughs> for the first time ever, Bob got something right.